please subscribe to Face TV Africa and turn the notification on. Face TV Africa, Ejo, e subscribe, subscribe, eh, hete. Face TV. Uswobi. December 16, first major. first major proclamation, published in Guardian newspaper, four pages, as advertorial, on the 20th of January, 2021. Copies of it have been distributed here. Electronic copies of it have been sent to your emails and even phone numbers. Anybody listening to this uh, broadcast now, anybody who has anybody from the south or middle belt of Nigeria who can read and write, who has not read that proclamation may become a victim of self-imposed ignorance because the global community, the world powers, have been discussing the details of what we proposed. And on the 28th, 29th, and 30th of April in 2021, the world powers took a common position on the situation in Nigeria. The US, the EU, and the UK they told Nigeria pointedly that in this dispute and commotion that has seized their space, that guns will not feature because in the past, the same issues that led to 1966 and 1967 and all the war that came with it have come again. Nigeria, instead of solving its problem by dialogue at the time, resorted to arms, Three, killed 3.5 million people in one part of the country and refused to solve the problem to date. Unfortunately, that same problem has spread everywhere. And uh, the, the Nigerian Indigenous Nationality, uh, Nationality Alliance for self determination has now become the majority in that country called Nigeria. The whole of the South, I want you to look at that map over there. The whole of the South and the whole of the Middle Belt, minus the 12 states uh, contiguous territory that imposed Sharia simultaneously in year 2000. They are on a mission of conquest. They came from our side. You saw the document I was reading. The British called us natives at the time. The ones who are not indigenous to Nigeria are the ones invading, killing people in the, in the east, in the west, and in the middle belt. And so there is now a new majority. There is now a new alliance that has overtaken the alliance of 1967, which isolated a small portion of the east and had their way, imposing the laws by, by Brigandi that became this constitution we have now. And so we come back to your question. I wanted to lay this background so that we can know that uh, when the governors went to Asaba to say that uh, they will ban open grazing, the people that come with uh, cows and kill people everywhere, they are armed with sophisticated weapons, AK-47. If you ban open grazing, by what weapon are you going to enforce, enforce the ban? The ban? And so all we said here is that the governors in taking that position, even for the fact that they were compelled by what we were doing to meet for the first time, mm. they have never met. And you saw the, the effects from the time they met. And they took that position. We were saying, and we, we know they are listening, and we're inviting them to come. They have moved away from where they used to be mm -hmm. uh, in saying uh, they stand with that constitution for all times. Mm. They say they will ban open grazing. The guns they will require, no one of the governors can issue one rifle to uh, either a vigilante or whatever they form. It still has to be that Abuja. And it is that the exclusive list of put arms and ammunition on the exclusive list. And the, 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 the subject of policing and all kinds of things relating to security. That is why the governors cannot you know, uh, enforce that ban. Therefore, if they are serious, they say they are playing politics, I know they are not. They may have other difficulties, but I, I certainly know that the killings going on in their spaces do not give them joy. So we're explaining to them that the mechanism for arriving at where they can have guns that are not dependent on the ones who are killing them, because I can't make any distinction, I can't, I'm, I'm unable to make a distinction between the ones killing from inside the bush and the ones who are operating from the government house. For goodness sake, the president of Nigeria has remained a, 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 a life grand patron of Mieti Allah. Mieti Allah that takes, proudly takes responsibility for the 
murderous activities of a, of a Fulani headsman. My president goes to the treasury to take a hundred billion naira to give to Mietiana that then hands it over to Fulani headsman. How am I to make a distinction between the Mietia Allah, the Fulani headsman, and the, and, the, and the president of Nigeria, who is, uh, you know, like uh, their champion? Uh, so, so that's that's for that's for that's for the that's for uh, what's it called? That's for the governors and what they said. We didn't. We, they, no, they also said. They also, he said they said that they do not uh, uh, subscribe to self determination. Yes. I can tell you because we have dealt with them. They do not understand. 99% of them do not understand the meaning of self-determination. Self-determination can mean 30% autonomy. Self-determination, as long as you are the one who decides for yourself in your space. That's all it means. Therefore, if you are the ones who are talking about restructuring, who want to go back to 1963 constitution, they only, they're only asking for maybe 70 or 80% of autonomy, which was what Nigeria was agreed to be. And so, Again, the ones who are saying they want to be oh, do a republic or be African republic, they're asking for 100% autonomy. And so it is a question of knowing the meaning of self-determination. Self-determination can give you a gamut of options. The only thing that is important is that it is the one who has to be governed in his space that is determining uh, who he relates with in terms of union and the terms of that union in terms of what is written in constitution. There are two different businesses. Yes. It's like memo and articles. The memo creates the company. Yes. The articles hydro. Re re regulates the relationship between the owners of the company. There are two different documents. I'm a lawyer of many years and I can tell you. And so the constitution, you see, that begins with we the people having solemnly resolved to live together, do hereby make a, the following constitution. Is the memo that way the people is, we the, we the Yoruba, we the Ogoni, populations that could be conscious of their own. Yoruba will be a country of 60 million people. And you say, we, the Yoruba people, having solemnly resolved with the Job people, the Igbo people, the Beron people, do hereby make and give unto us they, that they resolve to be in one union. That's one claim, and it's false. They now say they wrote the constitution to regulate their affairs. Again, a second false claim. And that's, that's all we are concerned about in this movement. He had asked about uh, the political parties. No, no, the, who, who is the NINAS? Okay. The, the, the NINAS, the, you are asking the number of organizations. In Yoruba, the last year, I think it was in March, we went to Ibadan. The day Igboho yeah. uh, came to join us. The Yoruba organizations that are aligned with Ilana Omo Odua alone are in excess of 100. 120. 120 by the last count. And as I speak with you, since uh, Nina uh, began to do more things, we have received requests from over 200 other organizations that uh, were operating in different parts of the world, home and abroad, who want from the Yoruba space alone. In the eastern part, all the self-determination organizations in the eastern half of southern Nigeria, according to what you see in that map, you see Dr. Don Pedro Abasaki, the leader of the Midwest movement, the whole of what you call a do state today, Delta. and the uh, Delta state are in that flank. All the way through the Bayesa and the rivers and Aquaibom, you see the list of signatories. And therefore you can imagine, the, heads of, the head of Pandev, may uh, uh, so rest in peace, uh, the Air Commodore Idonga Nkanga, is signatory to this. And he didn't just go signing. All the organizations associated with Pandev and the, were there. And the president, president uh, Senator uh, 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 Ukon. Uh, uh, so the, the all of those who had ever gathered anybody in, that, in those 11 states of uh, what you call the South, South and South East. Nyangwodo was uh, the President General of Ohaneze at the date he, he signed up to this. Uh, so uh, you go from there to which other part is left? The Middle Belt. The middle belt. All, of, all, of, all of, just look at the signature. That's, that's, that's why we're inviting you, particularly the media. That's why we gave you that publication. We are discussing the lives of 200 million people. The United Nations itself had, had enough concern to send a special repertoire to come to find out why blood was flowing all over Nigeria. Poverty climbing the rooftop of Nigeria. For a country that sells 3 million barrels of crude oil. Young people from Nigeria running from Nigeria as if, uh, you know, dashing out of hell. Every, they are ready to go anywhere. They are ready to trek across 
the Mediterranean the, the, uh, desert and then uh, the Mediterranean Sea. Everywhere they go, they, anywhere but Nigeria. What is the problem? That rapporteur came to the conclusion after a visit to Nigeria that happened in August of uh, 2019, came to the uh, determination that it was the constitutional arrangement of Nigeria that was responsible for all those uh, flow of blood, and that Nigeria had become a danger to the global community under that constitution. That if it is not taken care of, Nigeria will snap, and the global community will have to work out how to manage 200 million refugees. And that the, 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 the global terror networks, Al Qaeda and uh, uh, ISIS. ISIS, are already here. So why would the global community and the, and the, and the powers that be yeah, between Washington and New York be discussing the affairs of Nigeria in this manner? And the, and the, owner, the people who are in that problem are not interested in it, and they are discussing uh, whose turn it is to come and uh, preside over that uh, rotten you know, uh, situation uh, with, the, with the election that will come. Uh, what else did we talk about? Okay, when you Polit say close shop, shop, shop yes. to political parties, just very briefly, because I see many hands in the virtual room that I'll call my Jesse Kelly. Yes. When you said, tell them to close shop, what, what does that mean? We're inviting the political parties. Yes, they, we, we talk about, uh, you heard uh, what we call the Judas goat. For people who operate abattoirs, the animals, when you want to go to, where, they, where you take them for slaughter, from where they are feeding them, somehow they get to know that all the animals that go this way never come back. So anytime you try to take them that way, there's that reluctance. So the operators of abattoirs have to train particular goats or cows, depending on the kind of uh, animal you have. Those goats are the ones who, they come, because once they see human being, they know the time to die is coming. So they, 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 it is that goat that will now come, just stand as one of them, and initiate the movement towards there. And as long as they are not seeing human beings, they will go, go with him. That Judas goat is never killed, because it has to do that task over and over and over again to deliver them to slaughter. You can Google this. It's not something that we manufacture. It's called Judas That's goat. The whole world knows. So the role the political parties in Nigeria have been playing since 1999 is that role of Judas goat to lead us to slaughter once in four years, in the name of elections, under which, uh, by which uh, people are going to assume power and pretend to be a democracy under a constitution that, that take all our assets, that, that reduce us to slaves in our land, was an apartheid constitution. So we're just telling the political parties that there's no other business, whether they are PDP or APC or APGA or Young People Party, we are addressing today that generation of Nigerians that uh, you know, uh, organized what became NSAS. It is, they, they are asking you to go and form party. The other time they say not too young to run. Ask them, under what constitution will the winner, with which constitution will the winner govern? The constitution that already took away everything, the constitution that put that electoral contour, con, the, the, the INEC is in Abuja, able to do and undo. You can win your election, and the INEC will go and select the fourth, the person on the fourth, fourth on the list, like we saw in Imo. Who want to local government? Yeah, like we saw in Imo. And what are you going to do about it? So we're pleading with the political parties that the end product of everything they do is to contest the election. All our miseries flow from that constitution. All the political parties in Nigeria subscribe to that constitution. Any one of, any one of them that wins will have to swear to defend and uphold that constitution. Therefore, we are back in our damnation. They are reinforcing the source of our misery. But when they win the election, the ones that are governors will begin to go and take four or five billion every month. The ones that are senators will begin to take 50, 60 million every month. That's all they're interested in. And so we're telling them, we're inviting them to please even just listen, examine it. Because the ones who are suffering from this, the ones who are being killed, whether it's in the Middle Belt or in the East or in the West, they are the ones calling them now to say, please, we can't go to renew the life of this constitution again the, the, in 2023. Let us stop now and go into transition. And uh, how will it happen? We are not uh, inviting any novelty. South Africa was in exactly the same situation by 1990. Apartheid constitution was introduced in 1910. And ANC was formed in 1912. The same thing we are trying to do now 
was what South Africa had to contend with for 80 years. And it came to the point in 1990 that uh, somebody Fred, in government, Frederick de, de, de Clark, had the courage to say no society can be constructed on this kind of foundation and it will stand. And he announced an, uh, you know, uh, uh, an end. He, 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 he made an announcement that the, South, that the apartheid constitution would be decommissioned. It is what Frederick de Clark did in 1990 that we're inviting with apartheid constitution to commence the process of uh, dismantling apartheid. The only difference between our situation and that of South Africa is that in South Africa it was the Boers. But every other thing is the same. White skin versus, versus black and color. Strange mm. minority. Mm. Seizing the entire land and imposing the constitution that make everything their own to the exclusion of the owners of the land. Our own ordeal started in 1914. The white skin we have here is the Fulani, super sponsored, sponsored by the British. They are in a joint venture against all of us. And the, and the proceed of that joint venture is the 3 million barrels of crude oil that Nigeria sells every day. It belongs to them exclusively. Ask the Job people, ask the Shekiri people, ask the ASEAN and, and, and the ones, all of them in that uh, the place we call the Niger Delta. It is, uh, it, is, it is in that regard that we are telling all of those who are listening now, that what we have to do, and it's an emergency, the people who are being killed, 200 million people, or at least 150 million, if you remove the Sharia belt, because those ones have succeeded. I want you, the media, to pay particular attention. The Constitution of Nigeria in Section 10 expressly prohibits state religion, whether by federal or state government. 12 contiguous states, from Sokoto that goes all the way to uh, uh, Medugui, simultaneously adopted Sharia. Have they not succeeded from a secular union? They have. And we do not quarrel with that. We only say, we interpret it to mean that they've exercised their right to self-determination. That's what they decide to do. Their state assemblies pass the law. The governors signed up to it. And they've been implementing it, chopping up people's hands, and they're behaving those who drink beer while they take money from proceeds of VAT. VAT. So we're saying that they have left, they have succeeded from a secular union. And what they're doing now is to try to conquer us. They're trying to overrun us. They are titled deed, which is what we are pronouncing dead today. They are titled deed, the constitution, is, uh, is, 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 uh, is being defeated. But our people do not know that they have become free. The prison gate is open. Our people are still sitting and refusing to come to leave the gate. The constitution that bound them leg and hand is dead. So we are inviting them today after this 120 days of consultation, having given the federal government 90 days, what did they do? They rushed to the National Assembly to try to go and do amendments. And we told them that the mandate of the National Assembly doesn't extend to constitution making. That was how the thing collapsed on their head. Then the governors, instead of coming to the consultation, we invited them. They read what they read and went to Asaba to start pretending, to start uh, speaking in a manner that, uh, you know, uh, tell their people that they are coming. They have not come around fully. We're inviting them openly again to come to the propositions because their own people who have been slaughtered are listening and waiting to see what they will do. Are they going to stand with the enemy to, to, to continue to defend and uphold this constitution, planning another election in 2023 that will renew the life of that constitution so that their people can be slaughtered? The people are trying to overrun us, conquer us afresh, to establish control outside what the constitution you know, gave them. It is now up to us to allow them or not to allow them. I write for New Nigerian newspapers. Yes. Yeah. Uh, borrowing from the experience of uh, the South Africa. Uh, way back. Yes. I want to find out yes. from all your consultations yes. is there anybody within the government that has publicly declared support for this agitation? That's your question. That is one. Right. Secondly, If it is proven to the National Assembly or the lawmakers that their duty is that of uh, lawmaking. lawmaking and not uh, uh, constitutional uh, drafting, sir. what is their stand on this? And from your consult finally, from your consultations, I want to know, yes. because you made us to understand that you've consulted widely yes. with stakeholders. Yes. Have you personally reached Mr. President, over this, sir. Tomba di bofumoto, ibola wa mawa.
That's all about that. For those who didn't understand the, the Greek who was speaking, she was asking how this matter of uh, ask, uh, you know, getting the political parties to close shop. We are still appealing to them at this time. We say we have to persuade them because unless they are, they are, unless they are happy with the killings that are going on, unless they are happy with the misery and the poverty that has overtaken everybody, we believe we've not asked them to leave government house, those in government house. We offer transition. Stay in place. We don't want anarchy. We still have two years to the point of election in 2023. Between now and that two years, if they refuse to listen, I'm sure that those who did not know that the role they were playing all this while, young people whose future have been mortgaged, whose, whose, whose everything have been damaged by the constitution the political parties are clinging on to. Those people are going to decide what we are doing is just to place all the cards on the table and to offer a framework. If you read the five points of demand, you will see exactly what we propose about how to go step by step. There is also another document of 2018, which has also been shared to you, that open memorandum to the President uh, Buhari by this uh, alliance, offering a step-by-step, start-to-finish you know, uh, mechanism for undertaking the fundamental reconstruction that this union requires now. You see them in government every time saying that nobody knows how it will be done, how it can ever be done. No. When we convened PRONACO in 2005 and we had 164 ethnic delegations meeting for two years, sitting in Lagos, sitting in Poracot, sitting in Enugu, sitting in Jos, sitting in Kano, including Buhari, sitting in Lagos to conclude, including <laughs> Muhammad Buhari as part of the Fulani delegation that came, including the Sayyid Abu Bakr, yeah, Sultan in Sokoto now, he was a colonel in the army. Yes. They were all parts of the delegation that came. All of the groups who were angry enough with Nigeria at the time to carry arms, Asali Dokoba and his uh, uh, Niger Delta the Volunteer the Force, Force. Ghani Adams and uh, his OPC, even the ones who were talking Biafra at the time, uh, Wazurike, yeah, yeah. we persuaded all of them to please put their guns aside and come to a meeting of, of the owners of Nigeria. Forget what the British did. Forget what the military did. We are here now. The trouble is here to be solved. What do we do? And we, we went around you know, doing that for two years. The, the U.S. Center of Observer Mission, the, the, the uh, uh, European Union Center of Observer Mission, I, I was directly in, uh, involved in dealing with those. Uh, they start with us from the first day to the last day. The draft that came out of that, uh, 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 that process, yes. it was a delegate from Casina that moved the motion at plenary for the adoption of that uh, you know, finished product. Mm. Everything we are trying to resolve now, everything we tried to resolve since 1967, were done you know, it, we, 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 we put everything on the table. We actually put the question of, do we want to continue in the union? Ojuku was involved. Enohoro was involved. Choinka was involved. Who else do you want to go and bring to, to, to raise these discussions? And then people who are in government. Let me tell you, some of us are thinking that government, because they've uh, conditioned us mm -hmm. to, to that uh, feudalist uh, pyramid where the emir is at the top and nobody can ask him, what are you doing? Government is like the hired management of a company in, the, in comparison with the owners of the company, the shareholders. The Nigerian Union is a joint venture between the sovereign components, the, the people that could have been countries of their own, but who decided to come together, which was the meeting that happened in Lancaster House, which is this false claim in this constitution of uh, we the people have solemnly resolved. It is that falsehood that Yoruba have resolved with Beram, with Tiff, with Ijo, that we're saying, you cannot put our signature on a document we did not make. That now sees all our assets, the oil and gas assets of the Niger Delta is seized from them by this constitution. There's nobody in Abuja that can return that thing to them except the sovereign owners of Nigeria decide what will happen. You saw the petroleum industry bill, they, 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 they are using to insult the intelligence of everybody. We, we, don't, we don't have any more to tell them than the contents of that uh, proclamation of uh, December 16. Anybody who will ask us any question about how should please go and read 
that uh, proclamation. We come back to the first uh, question. Okay. What was this? Um, so anyone? No, 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 the, no, no, no. From the first gentleman. Yeah. No, no, the first gentleman. Let's just yes, uh, take so, a Yeah, very briefly. Uh, yes. We have a lot of people in the budget. Yes. So anyone, anyone from the government? Like, uh, uh, you yes. Have a, is it not uh, the South African? Whether you spoke to Buari? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you have anyone in government who um, who has a uh, who has ever been told or who has uh, who, who, who now believes? There was openly. Like there is nobody. Like, the like a, there are names I'm calling now. There are names I'm calling now, and uh, I, we have documents right here. You media will see it before you go. It's in an envelope uh, somewhere inside this premises. You will see that Buhari, who is president now, was directly involved in all that process of how do we resolve this. Nothing has changed from what we said that time. And just that people that. didn't listen. Uh, Basojo went on national television at the time to say we were committing treason if we, in, if we called a meeting of the owners of Nigeria. Of course, when he saw the owners of Nigeria gather, uh, nobody told him to dress back. Now, all of them who were, Buhari was part of full delegation that came. Uh, the owner of uh, the party of, uh, what do they call them now, APC, was governor in Lagos. He was directly involved from the time of, because it was the unfinished business of Nadeko that Pronako came to do to make out the constitution by which we go to uh, the democracy. So, uh, Bola Tinubu was very much involved. His chief of staff, uh, uh, yeah, Fashola, yeah, Fashola yes. at, the, the, at the time we were doing this, his chief of staff who had to relate day and night with the conference was Fashola. The attorney general in that administration of was, Lagos State was, was Oshibajo, he's now uh, vice president. president. Uh, who, who, do I, who do I live out amongst all of them? They understand exactly what we are talking about, and they are now setting up committee that will go and discover afresh, a Rufai committee that will discover afresh uh, what the meaning of restructuring is. Okay, second one. Second, law second. Lawmakers, what is their stand? Does it matter? Law the, law, the, law, the, the, the lawmakers, again, it is this uh, misconception that unless they are, uh, their mandate is to make law, the constitution by which they are, that mandate is supposed to be conferred is what we are disputing. So what we, are, what, we are, what we are talking about is like a, the owners of a company, the shareholders of a company are holding a meeting. And then uh, the management people they hired to work for them are the now sitting, they, they threw away the their memo and article. Yeah. What happened to us in the was that the memo and articles of the Enterprise Nigeria was overthrown by hired management. It was people in government that uh, it was go on on the, on the, on the, on the 27 day of, of May, of May in 1967. That, uh, that uh, fractured the, 12, uh, the, the, four. the four regions into 12 states. And the federal government from that day became the owner of the assets of those regions. And progressively, they fractured those 12 states into the taxes we have now, okay. in which one region has become the owner and controller of everybody. The National Assembly does not have the mandate to even partake of this discussion in, in, in what they are doing currently, amending constitution. Uh, to continue in their brigandage. They are committing treason against all of us. All the people who have been swearing to defend and uphold this constitution that is a fraud. We went to court in 2007 to say that this constitution is a fraud. The Attorney General of Nigeria of the time joined issues with us in court and he, he had no answer. He said he had nothing to say. That was the answer to our charge that uh, the constitution by which our life is being ruined is a fraud. So let's take yeah, a very no, I just want to just uh, let, no, one of the questions yes. and then we we'll go to it's the, no, the first guy at TVC. I just don't want us to continue to have an issue with definitions. Tony had tried to explain it. Ninas is for the indigenous peoples of Nigeria, for self-determination. Every secession is a self-determination, but all self-determination is not equal to or tantamount to secession. Saying I want to determine how I engage in this union does not mean I want to declare Pedro Baseki Republic. Get it clear, because it is important we educate our people properly. I don't know whether I get my point. You must know that as at the time our world of war was the, I'm using that deliberately, was the premier of the Western region. By self-determination, it was agreed across board by all of them that Mr. Awolo, Chief Obafemi Awolo War, owns 50% of everything that comes out of the Western Union, of the Western region. Today, it, you only get 13% derivation, which is tantamount to 87% 
deprivation. You must know that Nigeria, when it worked, when Cocoa House was built, when Western Nigeria had TV stations, was 50, 30, 20. No, you are young people. The people that we represent, the people Tony is screaming for, the people Professor Akitoye is screaming for, when they were born, our people had 50% of whatever comes out of Lagos. 30% is put at the federal, to the federal government. 20% in a federation account to be shared pro rata according to, popular, uh, to population, demography, and spread. Today, Nigeria operates via reverse osmosis. You must know. You are the most important plank in everything everybody on this side is doing. That is just a comment. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Please subscribe to Face TV Africa and turn the notification on. Face TV Africa. Hey, yo, hey, subscribe. Subscribe. Hey, hey. Face TV. Oh, Swoby.